Mr. Speaker, I stand, <laughs> I stand to address this issue of Koimbori. Uh, having come from the same county with him and being his mama county, I, number one, was very embarrassed at the situation that Koimbori put us in. And I see as members continuing shouting at one another at this point. I, I'm trying to ask myself whether all of us got to know the magnitude of destruction that statement made to this country. Uh, and it is about all of us. Yes, and somebody is calling me Bibi a bishop, and you knowing that I'm a wife of a clergy, and having sat here to take two million shillings to go and sell my county, that to me meant that I am not only a rogue, but I am also not respecting my Christian faith. But all said and done, Mr. Speaker, I would want to say this. It is very hard for a Kikuyu man to say sorry. It never comes out easily from a Kikuyu man. I may not know about other communities, but I can confess that for a Kikuyu man, it is never easy to say sorry. So I'm imagining Koimbori must have tried to work out to come and say sorry. But again, he is playing us a game. Because Koimbori has apologized and apologized very clearly and we feel good. But the same Koimbori has put the same letter in his social media and said it is a fake letter. So again, he puts us in another mess because we will appear like we forced him to come and say it was a lie. So maybe, Mr. Speaker, you would give us a direction on what this means to us because I think part of what fueled what happened here on the 25th was that statement. We are trying to downplay the statement, but that would have meant the end of all of us, including our children. And as I am seeing some people there shouting, they need to understand the magnitude and the weight of that statement and what it meant to this country and where it had, would have taken us. So, Mr. Speaker, I would only want to make one request, that maybe Koimbori, people may not buy our story because they already believe we were given the two million. But then he needs to put a proper, a proper apology to the people of Kenya. They may not buy the story, but at least he would have spoken about it. But for me, as his mama county, I had said I will never forgive him in heaven and on earth. But today on this floor of the house, I am choosing to forgive him, but on condition that he again puts again on his social media that whatever he said was a lie. And Yes, and go to the same church which is also in Kiambu County, where I represent, and stand there, na ni member wa your church, and be prayed for. Na hiyo kanisa yao believes in mafuta, aende ya mwagiriwa paka mafuta, ya confession, so that we forgive him. Yes, sir. And will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. I think... Honorable Order. Speaker, I have listened to what uh, members across the aisle have said that if you seek forgiveness, you shall be forgiven. And I must commend the Honorable Koimbori for seeking forgiveness for his unrighteous ways of things he said about members that were not there. But the book also tells us if you confess, and I, when I listened to Honorable Koimbori, I heard him say that he said things that he now knows are untrue. And he knew they were untrue even at the time he said. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, the fact that the Bible tells us if we confess, we shall be forgiven by the Almighty God. And we are all followers of Christ and followers of the Almighty God, Allah, even for those of us who are from the Muslim Islamic faith. Honorable Speaker, if you can forgive me from these ones who are saying we are not God. Of course, I know we are not God. But we all believe in God. And I want to believe in this house, Honorable Speaker, we are men and women of great faith. Men and women who are Christians and others who are very good Muslims, who believe in the Almighty God. And therefore, being followers of Christ like myself, I have absolutely no problem as a person in forgiving the Honorable Koimbori for his inequities. However, 
to protect the institution of parliament, Honorable Speaker, to protect the dignity of this house, to protect the dignity of innocent members of parliament who are seen as sellouts for either 2 million shillings or 2,000 shillings or whatever the amount was, Honorable Speaker, then I would beg that we handle this matter with a little bit more care so that tomorrow I do not stand up and accuse a member of parliament who votes this way or the other of having received bribes, knowing what I am saying is untrue. More worrying, Honorable Speaker, and I would urge you, Honorable Speaker, to ask the Honorable Coimbori to stand in his place. Because if you seek forgiveness, please do so with clean hands. When the Honorable Coimbori wrote that letter last week, Honorable Speaker, that letter was delivered to your office in the evening, a copy was delivered to my office, and a copy, I think, to the leader of minority, because they were copied. And I would have wanted to hear the Honorable Coimbori confirm if indeed what he says, he was the author of this letter. This letter was delivered by a staff member in his office, whom he knows, and I don't want to name him because he's not here, but the Honorable Coimbori knows his staff member who delivered that letter. The letter was stamped in my office. Unfortunately, the person who stamped it received, put one stamp upside down on the copy that he came with that he was to return with. And he asked that it be stamped properly, facing up, and it was stamped. That is the letter that circulated on social media last week. The Honorable George Coimbori, on his social media platform, specifically on his Facebook page, stamped the same letter fake and said it is fake news. I will therefore have been more convinced to believe in the seeking of forgiveness by Honorable Coimbori if he also came out clearly to tell the people of Kenya whether the dishonesty exhibited in, on his Facebook page is not the same dishonesty he now seeks to exhibit on the floor of this house, pretending to seek forgiveness that he does not mean. But if the Honorable Koimbori can confirm to me and to this house that even his actions on Facebook page that day were informed by other factors other than the truth, Honorable Speaker, and confirm he was the author of this letter, then I am more than willing myself to forgive the Honorable Koimbori. Failure to do that, Honorable Speaker, and that's why I say there must be a balance between our faith and the dignity and honor and respect of this House, Honorable Speaker. Failure to do that, then I would strongly recommend, because Honorable Koimbori cannot be in a church and allege one thing. Come and draft a letter seeking forgiveness. Then the same evening, post on social media that the letter is fake, a week after, appear on the floor of this house, now saying a different thing. Which George Coimbori do we believe? Which George Coimbori are we seen here? Which Coimbori, George Coimbori is here? Is it the George Coimbori who lies in church? Is it the George Coimbori who stamps letters fake on social media? Or is it the meek-looking George Coimbori who is seated here now seeking forgiveness? If this George Coimbori is seated here seeking forgiveness, Honorable Speaker, is the same Coimbori, I forgive him. If the George Coimbori of lying in church and later denying and reasserting the lie, then I will not forgive that George Coimbori. But the George Coimbori who is here, if he wants to be honorable, if he wants to dignify this house, he must come out clean, confess one to the lie he said in church, confess to the lie he sold on social media, if he comes that clean, I am more than willing to forgive the Honorable George Coimbori and ask the Almighty God to also forgive him for having lied in church. And uh, the Honorable George Coimbori is my very good friend, Honorable Speaker. In fact, the Honorable George Coimbori, in his first election as a member of parliament, he will tell you he had serious problems. Mr. Speaker, some of us lost properties because Honorable Koimburi lied 
that we received two million so that we could vote for the finance bill. Mr. Speaker, I'm asking one question. Is Honorable Koibori ready to go back to the same church and apologize from the same church that he lied? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, we must, we must speak the truth and tell each other the truth. Is Honorable Koibori ready to go to the same church and admit on the same pulpit that he's, he lied and he incriminated these members of parliament?